Hello, nature lovers, and welcome to another exciting episode of Environmental Systems and Societies. Today's episode is all about water resources, and we're going to learn that very little of the water on the earth is fresh water, then that fresh water is transformed and transferred around the planet, and that the way humans use it may or may not be sustainable. So if you look at the planet here, you see how much blue there is. It looks like a lot, and it is. It's 70% of the planet is actually covered with water. And of that 70%, only 3% is fresh water. And fresh water is what we need for drinking or bathing or growing our crops or even recreation, let alone drinking. Now of that 3%, 69% of it's locked up as ice, 30% of it's locked up underground, and about 3% of it's in rivers and lakes. Now, and water really spends different amount of time in each place, so we call that turnover time. And it's how long a molecule of water exists in a particular place. So it may only be in the air for nine days, but if it gets in the ocean, it might be there for 37,000 years. Okay, and speaking of ocean, let's talk about ocean currents. And this is how the water's moved around the earth. And they're created by the spin of the earth and by wind, and ocean currents basically take energy from the equator to the poles and then the, it comes back and gets more energy and goes back. And the warm currents that are moving from the equator to the poles are like the Gulf Stream or the Kuroshio current. And but then when it comes back from the poles, like from the South Pole up towards the equator, you got the Humboldt current by Peru and the Bengula current by Nambia, South Africa. Here's a picture of a water current from space. Okay. Anyway, so that's how energy gets moved around. And basically, though, this movement of energy really affects the climate. So as, heater wa as, heat, as water heats up and cools down uh, faster than land or slower than land does, this means that the land that's close to the sea tends to have a more moderate climate. Okay? And, and then because of this also, ocean currents like the Gulf Stream actually keep places like Europe warmer than they would be. Cold currents actually create deserts like that. One of the most famous is El Nino, and El Nino, or famous climate problems is El Nino, and this is caused by ocean currents. So normally the Humboldt current moves from uh, kind of the poles in Australia, um, I'm sorry, from South America to Australia. And when it does, cold water rushes up to replace what moves across, and that cold water has nutrients that feeds those anchovies, okay? But when El Nino occurs, the current switches direction. So the warm water and air actually move from Australia towards uh, South America. And when it does, it pushes the nutrients and the anchovies down. And so instead of having a great harvest like this, they get this kind of anchovy fishing. None. And people start starving. But that's just the start of El Nino. Because as the warm water and the air move toward Peru, that moist air hits the Andes Mountains. It's forced up where it cools and changes terrain and just starts pouring down on the coast, causing flooding and so forth. But it also, it doesn't just affect Peru, it affects all over. It affects droughts in Australia and Indonesia and the Pacific Northwest. It causes flooding in California and the Midwest and Central Europe. It causes the monsoon to go away in India, which they rely on. And this drought causes things like forest fires to happen in the Pacific Northwest and Northern California. So it has a huge effect on the world. It's because the, the, all that energy actually changes the jet stream. So this monsoon that would have happened in India doesn't. And you can see how this farmer has nothing to grow. His crop is gone and dead. So this is an example of how water becomes a huge critical resource, okay? And so a few facts are over a billion people don't have clean drinking water. You think about trying water at a well sometimes, it kind of stinks. That's still good drinking water. This is not good drinking water. 2.6 billion don't have good sanitation, which causes disease. And because of that, almost 2 million people die every year from diarrheal diseases. 39,000 people die from waterborne diseases. Rivers are shared and uh, by more than one country, and this causes disputes. And so places start to run out of uh, water because some country takes, the, takes it before it gets downstream. Now, salt water, you think, well, there's 70% of salt water. You can't use salt water, okay? You can, but it's really expensive to take the salt out. It takes a lot of energy, and only really wealthy countries can afford to do that. Countries that are in the middle of a continent and don't have a lot of money, they can't afford to take salt out of salt water. And we call that kind of water scarcity when you're without water, but it's not just how much water there is, it's how we use it. So if we have enough water, but we use a lot of it to water our crops or to cool our machinery in the factories, that affects our water scarcity, it increases our water scarcity. 
Okay, you throw in droughts and climate change and soil erosion to the picture, and water becomes more and more and more at the forefront of the problems of the world. Okay, add to that that as rivers run through countries, several countries, like the Danube River, shared by 19 countries, which country gets to use the water? What happens to the countries at the end of that river? Okay, you start having wars. You have you start having people fighting over it, and that's what is kind of the thing we're sort of worried about. So is there a way to sustainably use fresh water and so that we can all use it for future generations? And that's, you know, that's sustainability, right? Use the resource at the same pace or slower than at what it's reformed, okay? So let's use an aquifer as an example. This aquifer is a, it's a think of a rock sponge that's under the ground. And as it rains, it percolates down through the soil and through the rock and it gets stored in that rock sponge. You can dig a well and pull some of that water up to drink from. You can also pull that well from a well and spray it all over your fields. But the problem is, is when you do that, you consume it faster than it can replenish itself. It takes a long time to replenish itself. And because of the rest of the world is starting to get more wealthy and want more things, we're using more fresh water to make it. So the demand is becoming greater, not less. And this leads to problems like low water levels in rivers and streams. It causes rivers to run slower because there's less water, so the silt that's in there settles and makes it even more shallow. I already told you about the aquifers being, in, aquifers being emptied. Irrigation changes the PE ratio of soil, which we've talked about, right? Back to PE ratio, makes it more salty. Fertilizer and pesticides are polluting rivers, and factories are dumping warm water into rivers, which changes the amount of dissolved oxygen that they can hold, which changes what can live there. So how do we fix these problems? Well. We have to use more water efficient appliances and toilets. If you gotta wash your car at all, you do it in a car wash where there's actually filters that'll filter out the soaps. Select drought resistant crops, and uh, then when you do irrigate those crops, use closed pipes and drip irrigation instead of just spraying it with a sprinkler. That's a very inefficient way, most of it evaporates. Reduce the amount of pesticides that you put on things and make sure it's specific pesticides to what you're trying to fight. You know, use, uh, regulate what temperature water goes back into the rivers. These are all things we can do. So there are things to do, but we gotta start doing them, okay? So what I hope you got today is that even though there's a lot of water on the earth, only 3% of it is usable by us, um, and that all the water gets moved around via ocean currents, and that how we use it may or may not be sustainable, and it's up to you. Yeah, I hope that helps. Peace out, homie. Leatherback turtle. <laughs>